ectoplasm and uh, the surgical approach is to so mainly i'll be concentrating today on only hip joint uh, so basically as we all know uh, before going to hip it is a, a hip is a ball and uh, socket type of joint so there are many diseases which are related to like in childhood and in adulthood so basically i'll be concentrating only on the adult parts so whatever the diseases which is affecting the hip and what are the treatments for the hip so basically arthroplasty is nothing but it is a replacement when you are replacing a joint it is known as plastic so that is what we call it as arthroplasty replacement of a joint so here uh, in total hip replacement uh, what we do is we replace a part of removed head and we replace the acetabulum so scientifically if we see so it is a ball and socket uh, type of joint we remove uh, the both the acetabulum and the femoral head so basically if whatever the disease causing the damage to the hip joint we will be replacing with the new one so new uh, product like process we call it as a process hip process as well so i'll be de uh, dealing with the trigger later so patient why why we need to go for uh, arthroplasty procedure is uh, to maintain the stability or the stability of the hip joint so for locomotion we need locomotion uh, we need both the hip joints to counteract properly and we need to walk so that is that is why uh, it gives us stability so first of all we do total hip replacement for an uh, stability so for people who are all having any diseases so that that diseases i'll be talking with later so in it, it was very popularized in 1960s so in the 20th century only it has got like uh, more new, new techniques have come so coming to the history and evolution of total hip replacement so initially who were uh, Who started is Sir Robert Jones. He started in 1912. He just used a gold foil. So basically, you can see on hip and joint, it is a ball and socket. In between that, to reduce the articulating surface or to reduce the damage to the femoral head or acetabulum, he just used a gold foil between the head and acetabulum so that it will not damage the joint. So initially, it was tried. Later, Smith and Peterson. So the, these are two scientists which uh, they introduced the concept of modular arthroplasty. So later in 1933, uh, Pyrex glass glass it is a material which was used and to reduce the friction between the both joints to prevent the joint arthritis. Later they developed they come up with the idea of cobalt chromium like whatever uh, we use in uh, the uh, metals. So these metals uh, whatever the mixture of it they call it as a metallium. So that's what in 1937 they used uh, to make a ball and uh, socket joint. After that, uh, after revolution in 1950, uh, the processes that uh, that is what we call it as stimulated processes will be made of uh, MMM, that is uh, metal material. So in 1952, Austin Moore is the one who developed the idea of putting two processes, that is endo process. It, it just will uh, be uh, uh, both ball and. In 1950, after that, they introduced the concept of metal on metal. So that is the first time they found out. But the, when they used metal on metal, there are more friction. As you know, when the metal on metal rubs, so it causes more uh, friction and it reduces the particles, micro particles, which again goes into the body and it is get it gets absorbed by the human body and it causes some metallosis or so any complications like that. So after that, he is the one. He is the father of arthroplasty. So Sir John Chandu. He is the pioneer of uh, arthroplasty in India. He is uh, he is uh, from England. So he has found low friction. So in 1950, I told you that right, so metal on metal, it is it is an high friction arthroplasty. But in 1960s, they found uh, he found a low friction arthroplasty. So rather than using a, a metal on metal, he just found a whole compound from head, cup, then uh, neck, stem like that. So based on the normal uh, hip joint biomechanics, he has found out the uh, proper uh, hip process for the patient. So in 1960, acetabulum, this is the deeper socket. It's like a socket, the femoral head is placed. So if you see the hemisphere, in the hemisphere, there is, I told you, labrum. In the labrum, only 10% of the femoral head is in contact with the femoral head. This is directed little laterally. Laterally and it is directed downwards and anterior. So basically, 45 degree antiversion is there in the acetabulum and uh, 10, uh, 15, 10 to 15 degree is there in that antiversion is there in the femoral head. So that is why the femoral femur head is like this and the acetabulum is like this in the 45 degree. Meet the acetabulum, the socket of your hip joint. 
It's a deep, cup-like hollow on the lateral side of the pelvis, formed by the fusion of three bones, ilium, ischium, and pubic. The surface is covered with articular cartilage for smooth movement. A rim called the acetabular labrum deepens the socket. It perfectly holds the head of the femur, forming the ball and socket joint. The acetabular notch allows passage for important ligaments. Its deep structure provides stability to the lower limb. Every step you take relies on this perfect socket.